So we casually speak about attaining enlightenment or becoming self-realized. But who attains enlightenment? Or what becomes self-realized? You see, <laughs> these expressions aren't real. They are an artifact of our limited linear language. We're so used to dealing with objects, things, and processes where something changes into something else that we don't really get linguistically the actual process of enlightenment. It would be more fitting to say, instead of so-and-so attained liberation or enlightenment or moksha or whatever, it would be more appropriate to say so-and-so lost his false ego. So-and-so was able to nullify his uh, false identity, individuality, he was able to remove the ignorance that covers his real self. In other words, self-realization is not an additive process. It's not adding something to the being. It's not something you can acquire. Rather, it's a subtractive process, a process of elimination. Neti, neti, not this, not this. And why is that? Because the being is already realized. Simply, it is covered over by ignorance, by desires, by false ego, by various acquisitions in the form of designations, bodies, mind, thoughts, and so on. So the process of self-realization is getting rid of all these extraneous things. And when one reaches the final goal, that means they're all gone. So there is no body that becomes enlightened because the person, the individual being, has disappeared. There are some great examples uh, of this, especially in the Buddha, the discourses of the Buddha. Once a Brahmin came and said, what have you gained by this enlightenment? And the Buddha replied, absolutely nothing. The Brahmin was nonplussed. What do you mean? How is that possible? The Buddha said, I haven't gained anything, but I've lost a great deal. I've lost my anger. I've lost my desires. I've lost my suffering. I've lost my false identity, my ego, and so on. So this is the actual truth. There is no body to become enlightened. The individual is a fiction that we create and then build a whole existence around. The only problem is because it's false, it's all temporary. It's an illusion. And with the death of the body, that illusion is shattered. Just take a look at your desires. 
I want this, I want that, I don't want this other thing. Huh? All these desires are based on the body. I want good food, I want nice clothes, I want a pleasant place to live. I don't want people to criticize me. I don't want to get sick, I don't want to get old, and I sure don't want to die. All these desires are based on the body. And the chief amongst all these desires is, I want to be an individual. Notice they all begin with I. I want this, I want that, I don't want this other thing. But this I is what is keeping us from self-realization. I always love to quote Ramana Maharshi when people would ask him, like, how do I know if I'm enlightened or not? Or they would say, I'm not enlightened. How do I become enlightened? And of course, the answer is I, the ego, can't become enlightened because to be enlightened means there is no ego. So Ramana would say, are you aware? Yes. Are you aware that you're aware? Um, yes. So then he says, so the self is already realized. Because the function of the self is simply awareness of awareness. Nothing else. So if you are aware that you're aware, hopefully you are if you're watching this, <laughs> self is already realized. There's another wonderful Zen koan. Does a dog have Buddha nature? Or does an animal have Buddha nature? And the classic answer to that is, Moo. <laughs> Not the moo of a cow. In Japanese, moo means neither yes nor no, or both yes and no. Nice and ambiguous, huh? But that's Zen. Every living being has the Buddha nature. It's just covered over. It's covered over more in animals than it is in humans. But humans do a pretty good job of covering it too. If you ask most people, are you enlightened? They would say no. Or they would say, I don't know. What is enlightenment anyway? But if you explain enlightenment properly, as the fundamental nature of every sentient being? The answer has to be yes. We're all enlightened, but that enlightenment, that nature is covered over. The fundamental nature is desireless, pure awareness, actionless, thoughtless, sufferingless, <laughs> without suffering, without ego. Huh? All these things belong to the illusion, to maya. So there's nothing wrong with maya as long as we recognize it for what it is. Just like I was just reading Ramana Maharshi's description of the Jivan Mukta, one who is liberated while still alive. And of course, that description applies to himself. <laughs> and he was saying the Jivan Mukta is completely free. He can do anything. But of course, what he actually does is based on compassion. Because when you are in that enlightened state, compassion is the only way that you could relate to the world. Because the world is unenlightened. The world is covering the enlightenment. The world, the universe, covers the self. That's its nature. 
just like the nature of the self is to be self-luminous, to enlighten everything, to illuminate everything. And it illuminates not only itself, but also the world. So the only thing keeping us from enlightenment is to recognize the illusory nature of the universe. And of course, that includes the body, the mind, the ego, all our silly desires. <laughs> huh? Because desire is always changing. It's no wonder we have no peace of mind. Just look at the things you desired when you were a small child. A red fire truck toy or a Barbie doll or, um, I don't know, nuclear tipped ICBMs. Oh, well, maybe most children don't desire those things. But certainly the children who are uh, masquerading as leaders of society want them. And that's why they exist. So the unenlightened, the undeveloped, the children uh, will always desire many, many things that are actually bad for them and everybody else. But as we mature, as we grow, as we develop in wisdom, we give up those desires. What was that in the Bible? When I was a child, I thought as a child, I played as a child, huh? and I desired as a child. But when I grew up, when I became mature, I left those things. I dropped them. So this is awakening. One time the Buddha was asked, what are you? Are you a deva? He said, no. Well, then, are you a Gandharva? No. Uh, are you a Yaksha? Oh, certainly not. Then, what are you? Are you a human being? You can see, definitely not. <laughs> what am I? I am simply awake. I am awake, awake to my real nature, awake to the fact that I am Brahman. But of course, this statement, aham pramasmi, contains a contradiction. Because if there is such a thing as I, an individual identity, then that cannot be Brahman. That is part of the illusion, Maya. See, if we parse these things very carefully, we find that language has a structure that is inadequate to express the uh, self-referential, self-reflective nature of enlightenment. So we have to create a metaphor of the enlightened being, uh, the enlightened person, I, the Jivan Mukta. <laughs> but of course, this is only an image. It's not really true. Because when in a state of enlightenment, the I disappears. So who becomes enlightened? Nobody becomes enlightened. Nobody attains enlightenment. Nobody reaches Nibbana. Even though these statements appear in the scriptures. Because in Brahman, in enlightenment, in Nibbana, there is no I. Aung Tatsa. Aung Shakti Aung.